Hey everybody, welcome back. Day 15 of 21 days in fasting and prayer. I hope that you are pressing into Jesus and that as you do, your heart is just coming alive, filled with his presence, filled with his joy, that you're excited about what God's doing. I would love to hear your stories. Today, I want to talk to you about why you don't need a vacation. Now, you might think, I need a vacation. You don't know my situation. And uh, I think that when you read the word, you can find reason to not need a vacation. But I want to tell you right now, I think you should take a vacation. You see, so often we are pouring out, we're so busy, we're working hard, we're doing everything we can, and we just need a break. And we feel like the way to recover from all that stress and all that pressure that we might be under is to get a vacation. I just need to get away from it all. But the problem is you get away from it for a while, and about the time you de-stress, then you come back to whatever got you into that point in the first place. And so this isn't something that's new to anybody and it's not unique to you and me and i think that we need to live our lives above that i think that we're not called to be stressed out pressured to where we're always looking for the next release or the way to to soothe the pain or the stress that we're under the challenge when you're living that way is that if you don't find a good healthy release then you start finding other ways of escaping and that's what the feeling of a need for vacation often is. It's an escape from your reality, escape from your situation. You're getting away and it's not real life. And uh, that might help alleviate the pressure for a short time. But again, you just come back to it. And if you don't do it that way, you find an unhealthy way, you find yourself finding escape in media. If you are scrolling on a, like a regular basis, like daily basis, every night you sit down, you're scrolling, scrolling, you're always doing it, you just find yourself going to the next, going to the next. Well, that's a form of escape and that's coping with something. Maybe there is a release mentally, emotionally that you're finding, or there's an avoidance of something. It's not healthy. Uh, you can find yourself binging on TV, you, Netflix, the latest series, watching it, I, I've been there, believe me. Uh, it could be through food, you're binging there. It could be through uh, drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography. It could be through any of these things that you're really coping and finding an escape from the pressures. And all of that, find, you know, there's pleasure to it, at least temporarily. And I think we're wired to find um, peace and, and pleasure. And so when we do it in a way that's healthy, it's great. But when we do it in a way that... Uh, is destructive to us well at the end of it you know we we suffer the consequences we reap of the flesh so why you don't need a vacation uh, look with me at Luke chapter 5 you would probably agree Jesus was was very busy he had a lot going on in fact the Bible talks about that not that he was just busy because sometimes we can confuse busyness with actually being effective but he was pouring out and in verse 5 15 of chapter 5 it says the report of Jesus went around concerning him all the more so the news about who he is and what he was doing it, it just continued to spread and great multitudes came to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities so you know how much people can take a toll on you right the energy required for the conversation the ministry the interaction helping them out and Jesus had multitudes of people doing this. So it wasn't just like, hey, I'm praying for the multitude right now. Boom, all of you be blessed. But he would lay his hands on person after person after person, take the time, hear the stories, cast out the demons, probably provide some counsel. I mean, this is what Jesus did. And it was for multitudes of people. And as a result of that, that's taxing on you. It's taxing emotionally, spiritually, and physically exhausting. Jesus was continuously pouring out, but he knew the secret to refill. He knew how to, to refresh. And the very next verse says, So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness to pray. So as a result of pouring out, he made sure that he himself often withdrew alone into the wilderness to pray. So he was working hard. And he wasn't looking forward to the vacation. He didn't need to get away from it all to be refreshed. He, he wasn't looking for this temporary break. He would often, regularly, daily, withdraw to a quiet place where he can be refreshed in the presence of the Lord, and he would pray. 
And so we're no different. You might not be praying for somebody all day long and casting out demons, healing the sick, multiplying, raising the dead, you know, all these amazing things, but you can. But nevertheless, whatever it is that you're doing, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take from you. It's going to take from your, your mental capacity, your emotional capacity, your physical capacity. And you've got to be able to fill that back up. The way that God has set it up and what Jesus modeled for us right there is to help you avoid needing a, uh, a vacation, needing this break from it all. But it's every single day I've learned how to get into the secret place, that quiet place before the Lord where he fills me back up and then I can go out and I have something to give. If you are running on empty, you probably need to relook at your schedule, your priorities, your focus, your time. Typically, it's not because you're working so hard. Typically, it's because you're not filling yourself back up the way that Jesus intended for it. The reason why you don't need a vacation is because vacations don't refresh you. Re vacations are temporary. If you take a vacation because you need a vacation, you're not going to get a vacation. You should take a vacation because you want a vacation. There's a difference. If you have to take a break, then it's going to take you about a week before you can unwind. And about the time that you really start enjoying it, you're back to work and nothing is different back there. But when you take a vacation because, oh, I was planning for it, I was looking forward to it, I wanted to, but I'm already fresh going into it. I'm full of joy, I'm full of peace, I'm full of strength. I've been, I'm, I am, uh, I'm riding the, the joy or the high of doing what God's told me to do the way he's told me to do it. You don't come in depleted. You don't come in burnt out. You come into that vacation ready to enjoy it. It's like I have, prepared for this dessert and I'm going to eat it. Jesus said this, go on vacation all you who are heavy burdened and I'll give you rest. No, he didn't actually say that. In Matthew chapter 11, he said, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jesus tells us the way to find rest isn't by going on vacation. Again, take a vacation. Take a an extravagant vacation do the fun stuff rest and sit by a beach and do nothing go on some adventure do something stay in great hotels eat great food do anything you want with that but just understand that is not your source of rest Jesus is look at this in the next verse he said take my yoke upon you and learn from me take my yoke what does that mean partner up with me let me take control of this here. Let me take the leadership of this. Put my yoke on you. Get hooked up with me and learn from me. Well, what am I doing to learn from him? I'm looking at what he did when he was pouring out, when he was needing to be refilled and refreshed. He knew where to go to get it. And he modeled that to me. He said, learn from me, for I am gentle and I'm lowly in heart. Oh, I'm not high strung. I'm not under pressure. I'm not pressuring others. I am gentle, I'm gracious, I'm full of grace, I'm lowly at heart, I'm humble, I'm meek. I don't have to be demanding. I don't have to feel like everything is about to fall apart. I don't feel like there's this um, sense of urgency that, that keeps me from doing the things that matter for eternity. Learn from me and you will find rest for your souls. Look at that. Jesus said, if you learn from me, you'll find rest for your souls. So often, our bodies are stressed out, and it's not our bodies. It's our souls. It's the soul level. When your soul is at rest, your body is capable of far more, and you have so much more energy. Those who wait on the Lord will mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They will walk, and they will not faint. Even the young people, they'll faint, but not you. Not you. Why? Because you're waiting on the Lord. You're taking his yoke upon yourself. You are learning from him. You're seeking his face. This means you're taking time, scheduled time to pray. And you pray in the spirit and you pray with your understanding and you open up the word and you say, God, speak to me. And you declare God's word and you begin to interact with him. What's happening? Your soul is being strengthened. This is why you don't need a vacation, but you should take a vacation too. And on that vacation, you can seek God's face. And there's so much more that you'll be praying about other than, should I keep working at this job? Should I still live in this place? 
Should I, you know, should I make a major change? God, I, should I quit? Those kind of prayers at vacations are because you don't have this daily time. But if you turn the daily time around and you're not praying about, oh God, I don't know if I can make it, but oh God, fill me fresh today. Thank you that you lead me into victory. Thank you that I'm being refreshed by your Holy Spirit. Thank you that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And so I don't have to be under pressure. Thank you, Lord God, that I can find rest for my soul when I get away and I seek you. See, all of these things, they turn around our perspective. They turn around our expectation. They turn around our faith. And that brings a strength to us and a refreshment that ultimately comes from the Holy Spirit in our life because we made room for him. So I hope that you do take that vacation. But I hope even more that you often withdraw into a secluded spot to seek the presence of the Lord and pray. I love you. God bless you. We'll be right back with you tomorrow.